Hello, and welcome to the Focus on Eye Health Expert Series. I'm Kira Baldonado, Vice President of Public Health and Policy at Prevent Blindness. Joining me today is Dr. Lauren Ditta, Pediatric Neuro-Ophthalmologist at Labonner Children's Hospital and Associate Professor of Ophthalmology and Pediatrics at the Hamilton Eye Institute at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Welcome, Dr. Ditta. Thank you, Kira. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And um, I'd like to start off for our audience today about uh, a little bit about your title. So you are a pediatric ophthalmologist and a neuro-ophthalmologist. Can you explain what a neuro-ophthalmologist is? Sure. I think the easiest way to explain it is to just talk about my journey um, into that training. So um, I'm an ophthalmologist, so went to medical school. And then when I completed my residency, I did a specialized training in pediatric ophthalmology. And then after that, I did a, a, a consecutive fellowship in neuro-ophthalmology. And so neuro-ophthalmologists really specialize in the relationship between uh, how the brain processes vision and how it then can affect vision um, in various numbers of ways. So the eyes are really an extension of the brain. So when I talk about vision, the eyes are a window bringing the visual input in, but the brain really has to process that. And so there can be many conditions that can affect vision, either in the way that the eye sees, so clarity of vision, but also the way the eye moves um, in various different types of function. So neuro-ophthalmologists can have ophthalmology training like myself or can come from a neurology background. Um, and so my area of expertise is really looking at those conditions in children. Another condition that I'm starting to hear more about and there's more research on is cerebral vision impairment, sometimes called cortical vision impairment or CVI. Um, it's a condition that, that is being talked about more. Um, what exactly is this condition and what do parents need to know? Um, what can they do or how it can be treated uh, at this point in time if possible? Here, yeah, I'm so glad you brought this up. Um, the National Institutes of Health um, the APOS organization, so Pediatric Ophthalmology Organization, and really many organizations have banded together to um, provide education and awareness of cerebral visual impairment. And you're right, it can go by different names. Um, there's actually a consensus group right now really working to fully define define what cerebral visual impairment is. And in a nutshell, what it is, is it has to do, it's a condition that has to do with the way that visual information is processed in the brain. So as I'd mentioned before, the eyes are just that window and then the visual information gets processed in the brain. And so children with cerebral impair visual impairment, and we talk about it in children because oftentimes it's a condition that's acquired in and around the perinatal period. So for a while, retinopathy of prematurity, for example, was one of the leading causes of blindness in premature babies. As technology has gotten better, uh, premature infants are surviving um, and they're doing um, much better. We found that there are these secondary sort of sequelae to the brain that secondarily impair vision. And this can manifest in any number of ways. Again, it could be the clarity of vision, but it may also be the way that children respond to visual stimuli. Um, it may take them longer to, to identify things. Um, they may have behaviors where they are able to process um, the vision and visual stimuli better in backgrounds that aren't um, maybe very chaotic, very simple backgrounds. Um, and so we're learning more and more about the characteristics that children with this condition um, exhibit. And so that's really important because we want to know how we can treat it. And if we can do things to help these children um, improve their vision over time, um, I think it's very, it can be very challenging because new parents especially don't know what babies um, are supposed to see and when they're supposed to see it. And so in my practice, I really do educate parents about visual milestones. Um, for example, at three months of age, uh, a child should be able to lock in and track on their parent. So if they're moving their head side to side, a baby will move their eyes to their parent. And that's a really important milestone uh, because it tells us that the kid's getting good information, the baby's getting good information, visual information, and in responding to it. And a lot of children with cerebral visual impairment early on may not be doing that. In fact, parents may say, my kid, my child looks through me. Um, 
I just really don't think that they're 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 appreciating my face and and so it does affect those early bonds and relationships. But uh, CPI is not just limited to children; it's really anyone who's had any type of um, insult to the brain, so stroke or or trauma. Um, the brain processes all that visual information, and so um, there are conditions that can cause that that are acquired later in life. The other thing about CVI is that for babies who have this, it's really a lifelong condition. The brain is very neuroplastic. So how the brain is affected and how it's now seeing, those changes are lifelong and constantly adapting to uh, the visual stimuli in the world based on what visual connectivity is there or what's maybe not there. So it is something that we we see all throughout the lifespan and we need to address this and and, and educate because there are accommodations that can be made for these patients over the course of their life. Oh, that's really important. I appreciate the, the understanding that it goes just beyond uh, babies, but can occur later on in life. So um, if a child is uh, diagnosed with CVI, um, what sorts of, of help are out there for the child or for the adult that is impacted by this condition? Yeah, I think the most important thing that, let's say, an ophthalmologist can do, but even a parent can do, um, is identify that there is an issue with vision. And as an ophthalmologist, one of the most important things I do is treat treatable causes um, of things that I see that I can treat. So in other words, if a child, in addition, maybe needs glasses, if the eyes are misaligned, um, if there's any treatment that we need to do, we go ahead and address that because we want to get the vision as best as we can get it um, as, as the starting point. From there, we really want to tap into our resources with either teachers for the visually impaired or early intervention services, because we want to advocate early for these children, um, making sure that we're they end up meeting milestones or at least are aware of milestones that need to be reached at various ages. Uh, I think one of the most important things people need to realize if they haven't is that a child's vision is really the first sense they have that will allow them to go out and explore the world. That's why a baby will go out and touch things, um, explore things, their ability to go out and crawl. It's because they want to, they see things they want to attain. And so when the vision's affected, everything sort of um, seems to be delayed. The motor milestones, the speech milestones, um, the re again, the relationship with a parent, um, because they're not making those connections, those good, strong connections, because vision is impaired. So I think the most important thing we can do is number one, identify it. And then from there, treat what we can treat and then tap into those resources, early intervention, teachers for the visually impaired. And then for adults who have it is getting them into rehab programs, again, visual rehabilitation programs um, and things like that. Caregivers, parents, um, family members really are the strongest advocates um, for these patients who are affected. And so I really empower them. Uh, to go out and, and you know, we give them the tools to be able to advocate for their patients. There are so many people who can help us, but really it's the parents and the caregivers and the family members who can make those relationships happen. Thank you, Dr. Ditto, for being here today and for all that you do to uh, keep vision healthy. Thank you.